the all-star app the number one app in the business ufc bellator one championship pfl and more get the app right now link in description japan to everybody's surprise that you were already there before they even announced the fights for Ryzen 40 like when did you get there oh man so i got here about a week before thanksgiving yeah it was uh it was such an awesome opportunity, you know. Satoshi, the, the rising champion, we fought twice. He um, he's getting ready to fight Jim McKee, and uh, asked if I would come out and help him get ready. And I, you know, what an, you know, I was super, you know, very good that he would want ready. So uh, the opportunity. How did how did they reach out to you? Did they just did he just message you? How did that all come together? Oh, she just. And Ryzen reached out to me, and then yeah, and then I just messaged him back on social media, and yeah, just planned it out from there. Did you already know that you were going to fight on this card coming up on New Year's Eve? Um, so I, I was trying to get a fight on it for sure, but uh, I kind of knew if I was over here in Japan, then they would almost have to get me on the card. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of forced their hand in a way just by being there. I I incentivized them for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it makes it it makes it a lot easier for them right if you're already over there to to get a oh, fight for sure. you know? yeah it just makes sense. logistics yeah. logistics exactly so, so you get there and you're training with i don't know they, they could probably be the best gym in japan right now right like what's the environment like over there it's so everybody there like you know up in the same cloth as where i'm from you know they give you the shirt off their back you know what i mean they're just so so humble and just such good people but on the back on the contrary killers you know what i mean like that this gym is you know, i always say like you can always tell the level of jujitsu by the blue belt and man like bonsai jujitsu you know they're really good Come in amateurs here and obviously you know world champion satoshi and, and clever and um you know there's it's really really high level jiu-jitsu gym for sure so you you go over there and you say he he wanted you to come out to help him train for aj mckee you know it's, like you said it's a massive opportunity it's not like you've done you've never done this you actually i don't was it 2019 you came out to yeah. korea to help the zombie Right, get ready for was it yeah. Ortega? Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So you're you're kind of used to the the culture because you know Japan and Korea is different countries, but there's still a similarity to it, right? I mean, I've been so blessed in my career. You know, what I mean, to have the opportunities to be able to travel and you know to help other amazing fighters along their journey as well. Um, you know, and this this trip has been the same. You know, what I mean, it's been. It's been like the team and Satoshi, they've, they've, you know, welcomed me with open arms and made me feel like I was part of the team, you know, and, um, and it's just, it's just really awesome to be in this opportunity and to be doing my fight camp here, which is, you know, anytime you're doing, you're getting out of your comfort zone, you're growing, you know, and, and I've definitely grown being here as well. So, so yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been pretty awesome. I've been very blessed to do that. You know, did this with zombie, did this now with Satoshi and, and it's been good, man. It's, it's good stories. I ought to be able to tell my grandchildren. Like, you know, you fought him and then now you go train with him. Like, what is that like? Is this the first time doing that? No. So I actually, in the UFC too. So I fought Jake Matthews. I fought Jake Matthews and he actually, he was the first one. So we fought, we got fight of the night. And then he paid me to come out and be a his his training partner as well. So that was the first one. And then Zombie paid me. <laughs> and then now Satoshi. So honestly, like, but I knew after after our last fight, Satoshi and I, we had a we had an exchange in the back, you know, and I knew he was a really good dude, you know. And you know, I feel like after that fight, like we knew each other on a deeper level just like going in there and preparing and fighting each other so i knew it was going to be good it was going to be good training and it was going to be it was going to be an opera uh, an awesome opportunity to come here so i wasn't really worried about how that would go so it's been awesome for sure you know um if you go back to this year you know you fought twice in mma and you actually had two boxing matches 
um, switching back and forth from from those disciplines, right? So to say, has it been kind of awkward or have you enjoyed it? No, nah, it's been fun, man. Like boxing, you know, obviously like, you know, there's levels to everything, right? But boxing has kind of been refreshing because, you know, MMA is such chaos. You know, there's so much going on at, at one time. You know what I mean? You got to worry about getting kicked in the head and kicked in the legs. You got to worry about boxing. You got to worry about wrestling, grappling. Whereas boxing is... I only got to worry about, you know, three angles, forward punches, side punches, up punches and uh, raining down punches. So the, 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 the chaos of like, you know, the fight isn't quite there. So it's been kind of nice, like getting into boxing and learning the sport and then really falling in love with the pure sport of boxing. You know, that being said, MMA is my first love that, you know, it's where, it's where I want to be. It's what I'd rather be doing. But, um, you know, I think once I retire from MMA, when that day comes, I'll think I'll probably stick around boxing just a little bit longer. You know, I think it's it's a lot easier. You don't have as much weight, and it's just a lot a lot easier on the body. Man, you've been very successful at it as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad of a start. Yeah, not too bad, man. You've got a knockout in every fight i'm just like well i'm surprised that you're doing MMA. Yeah. you know once you get a taste of that success it's hard to you know just like oh man i gotta go back to the chaos but i guess that's what makes you like a tr true true fighter is that you can't step away right now yeah for sure man and that's the thing is like i've only been like i've been fighting the, the best guys in the world in mma the last you know 10 what i get signed of the ufc in like 2013 so, you know, going on a decade now, I've only been fighting the best guys in the world in MMA. So it's like, and now, like, you know, I've fought two, cha you know, two champions with Tofik Musayev and now Satoshi. And it's like, I'm right there. You know, I know I'm like right at the top of the, the top of the pack as far as, uh, you know, world standard of MMA goes. So, you know, like I, I want, I want to be a champion. I want to get that title. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm so close. So might as well, you know, hang in there keep fighting keep grinding it out with the top guys and uh when my time comes i'll be a champion and then bow out gracefully let's talk about this fight coming up at rising 40 on new year's eve um they switched up the opponent like can you i, I don't know who the opponent is i just know that they switched up the yeah opponent. yeah so the guy i'm fighting now his name's tyson nobumitsu osawa um he's had one fight with ryzen he fought tofik musiev you know former world champion um and he's a tough guy tough tough striker i think he's a shooto champion um so he's got good striking really really good power in his hands um i don't know much about him other than a couple fights i've seen but um looks like looks like a worthy opponent for sure looks like he's gonna come to fight and uh you know i'm not taking him lightly you know that last fight i was kind of uh i was kind of one foot in one foot out you know like losing losing to satoshi losing that title shot uh, you know, I, I had trained so hard. That was the best camp I ever had. Like I envisioned it. Like I lived for that moment, just feeling that, that title get around my waist, you know, and I lost and, and that really kind of, that really hurt me a lot. You know, it took a lot of the, the fire out of my heart, you know, kind of left me like one foot in one foot out. And when they offered me that last, the fight, last fight against Koji, you know, I was, you know, more you know, lo logically i was saying you know i'm gonna beat this guy like i'm way better than this guy everywhere you know there's nowhere this guy can beat me but the thing that you cannot measure that you cannot account for is the human spirit and you know the fire that a guy carries in his heart you know and he was he koji got got in that ring ready to die that night you know and i was just there to get paid you know and then that's that's the difference of what showed the fight you know what i mean when it when the fight got going you know we were halfway through the second round we were both tired and the fight was getting good to go like just starting he was he was standing in the fire ready to get burned alive and i was just you know just trying to subdue him not not let him get you know not let him beat me up i wasn't necessarily trying to go for the finish and, and hungry like a champion does you know and i think it took that loss for me to to realize like all right man like you're not done here don't just give this away opportunity win that title doesn't mean that you're done fighting you know so i think it took that loss for me to really to really understand it and really be in the position I am now where I'm going to go in there. I'm going to kick, I'm, I'm going to give it all I got and my hand's going to get raised at the end. You needed that mental reset then. A little bit. I need, it's more like mm -hmm. a kick in the ass. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, I dumb. 
you know better. You shouldn't have lost that guy, but you did. So it's like now pick up the pieces and get back to where you're supposed to be. You know, like you're not supposed to lose the guys like that. You know, you're one of the best in the world for a reason. You know, you're fighting champions for a reason. So, you know, that's, it's kind of, that's kind of how I took it. And, and I'm not like, you know, talking down to Koji or thing. You know, and yeah. Koji's a warrior, you know, he's a samurai for sure. But, um, you know, I shouldn't be losing the guys like that. You know, I'm, I put my dues in here. Like I'm one of the best in the world and, and that fight did not show that. So I'm going to go out there this fight and I'm going to, I'm going to show everybody, you know, make a statement that, uh, you know, I still got it. I'm still one of the top dogs. Doing training camp at Bonsai, there must be some, some differences, right. Compared to like doing your camps stateside. Like, can you give us some insight on that? Yeah, very much. So Bonsai is, uh, it's very like old school in the fact that it's just a lot of live. It's a lot of pretty much just live jujitsu, live sparring, you know, stuff like that. Like a little bit of pad work, stuff like that. Um, which I love, you know what I mean? Like that's kind of, that's how I started training. That's how, you know, I feel like a lot of, a lot of gyms are going back to that style as well. Um, mm -hmm. So that's been good. That's been good. It's just been, you know, basically just you you want to fight, you simulate fight. That's what you do. And uh, it's been really good. The The training times have been a little bit different. So it's been we train here really late at night, um, which was kind of hard to get get used to at, at first because of the time change and like the jet lag and stuff. But uh, but, you know, it's been really good. And like I said, everybody here is is amazing as far as human beings and also the skill set here is really high as well. So. I feel good going in this fight. It'd be nice to go out and, get a and, and uh, you know, be able to rip bottom jiu jitsu. You're going to fight this dude. It's on short notice, but I'm pretty sure you don't give a fuck. You're just like, <laughs> I just need an opponent. Yeah. So let's, let's bring somebody in. And, and he fought Tofik. So that's, that's someone on, on the resume. Um, how do you see this fight though? Like, what do you need to do? Cause you know, you've, you've had back to back losses. Let's be realistic. And uh, I think you need you need a real, real solid performance, right? Just to put your back, put yourself back in that picture, title picture. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've never lost three before in my career, you know, and and I'm not losing four. You know, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do whatever the fuck it takes to get my hand raised, you know, and um, I see, you know, I definitely see a lot of weaknesses in his ground game and, um, you know, training here with one of the best ground gyms in the world you know i think um i think there's going to be chances i can uh, really exploit those weaknesses and and get the finish so you know and i by i can strike with this guy too you know like i'm i'm a striker predominantly got my most of my finishes by knockout tko so you know i'm gonna straight i'm gonna stand with him a strike and when if the takedown comes or i get him knocked down to the ground i'm gonna look for the finish on the ground so you know there's no secret and i and i'm sure he knows that as well so yeah, I'm just I'm looking forward to just get in there and stand the fire with this guy, and mixing it up, and and uh, yeah, I'm coming for the finish. Now I want to talk to you about the the Ryzen versus Bellator event that's coming up. You're training with a few of the guys that are going to compete on there, right? In some massive fights, and one thing that stands out to me is um, the guys that are in Bellator that have been fighting in a cage. They're going to come over and fight in the ring. Like, tell me yeah you know you know what it's like like how hard is it to adjust to that if you're not used to that it's really hard honestly well so the thing about the the thing about the ring versus the cage so the cage is a as a weapon when you know how to use it both offensively and defensively right so the thing that that's different from the ring is off for off from an offensive standpoint when you're pushing guys against the ropes um it's actually it's like pushing them into a net so it actually, if you're, if you're trying to like push guys onto the, onto the end of the ropes to subdue them, it's actually going to make you really, really tired. And all they're doing is like hanging out like they're in a net. Right. But what, what it does offensively, it does help is that the body locks are always there. Like you can reach to the ropes, you can grab the body lock and the body locks always there. You can get wrestlers can get takedowns there. Now, defensively, it is a bitch because, you know, a cage guys push you against the cage. You can use the cage to push back off of to get off the cage, to use your defense there. In the ropes, if guys push you against the ropes, right, and like you're, say like you go through the ropes or you're face forward into the ropes, it is damn near impossible to get through back to the other side. Like you, it's, it's such, it, it's such a frustrating position to be in. And where I, I was really for the first time put in that, put in that position, my last fight, Koji, you know, um, I got pushed through the, he, he was on my back, you know, I was pushed through half in the ropes, half out of the ropes. And I couldn't get back in. And like, all I could think about 
was like just I was so frustrated because all I could think about was like how the fans would think that I was just stalling out the fight. Like I was just trying not to do anything, but it was really just I couldn't do anything because it, there's nothing to push off of, and you know it's a really frustrating thing. So there's definitely benefits to fighting in the ropes, and 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 definitely cons to fighting in the ring too. And I. I I feel like fighting in the ring, there's a lot more cons if you don't know how to fight in the ring than if you fight in a cage. Well, we're going to see that, man. You know, uh, Clever is going to face, uh, you know, probably the best fighter ever, right, in Bellator. And uh, Yeah, one of the best. And, sure. Yeah, one of the best ever. And, like, how do you see that, though, man? Because it's an interesting thing because Patricio Pipple, he's so, like, compact, right? He's so compact. Yeah. And uh, Clever's long and lean, and he's like a leper, right? Like he's like a leopard. Like he just <laughs> he gets in there somehow, right? He can pull guard. Like that's what thing's crazy about those guys from Bonsai. They can pull guard, and they're comfortable yeah. with that, right? And they'll take yeah. you out quick from the guard. That's the danger factor yeah. for both these guys, for McKee and Pitbull. Yeah, for sure. And that's something like, to be honest, like I was kind of like – I was ignorant to the fact, you know what I mean? I always thought like MMA, if a guy pulls guard, I'm just going to hammer him. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like that's the worst place to be in an MMA fight is like somebody who can throw punches, right? But man, until like I really came to this gym and rolled, like these guys are freaking specialists, like amazing jujitsu. Not, I'm talking like next level guys. And I've gone with some, I, I've trained at some really high level gyms, really good jujitsu guys, you know what I mean? And, and these guys are really next level. So, you know, like you said, like it doesn't matter if they're if they're on top if they're on bottom. If you're on the ground with these guys, you're in danger. You know what I mean? And and that's all there is to it. So uh, you know, it's a very it's a very interesting matchup for Clever. You know, Clever's got a tough fight. There's no doubt about it. Like you know, Pitbull's a really tough fighter, but uh, Clever's definitely got the weapons. He needs to finish the fight too. You know what I mean? And and I think that's uh, I think that's gonna be that's gonna be the goal for him is if he can get it to the ground. And he can work that finish. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be his his plan. It's good for the triangle, and you know he's really good off his back. You know Satoshi as well. So um, you know I, I think I would probably look for him to go in there, pull guard, and get the submission. It's it's a massive opportunity for those boys as well to like blast onto the scene, right? Like blast onto the to the MMA world. You know people know about them, but be, this opportunity yeah. is massive for them, right? How How is the a- atmosphere with everybody? Do they feel like it's that opportunity for them to just blow the doors off and just get their name <laughs> on like a Oliveira, like a like a Gordon Ryan type level of fame, you know? Sure. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I think honestly, like we're all professionals here, you know, and we just treat it like it's just another fight. You know what I mean? If you put it on a pedestal, if you think about it, like, you know, in terms of like, oh, it's a big deal. It's the biggest fight ever. You know, they're all of our every every fight is our biggest fight you know what i mean so i don't think that training we're just doing things we need to do day in day out and we go out there and the results gonna take care of itself so you know i think that that's something we, we worry about after the fact is like oh wow you just you know you just be one of the best guys in the world it's like well when you think about it beforehand you know it can really it can be it can seem like a huge feat you know what i mean so I think just training hard and staying humble, and then that's the way to that's the way to the top. You think those both those guys get go in there and 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 get the get the submission? Do you feel like it will be quick, or do you feel like it's gonna take some time for them to get get wrapped around them? Because those dudes, they're gonna wrap around you. It's it's gonna happen. If even if they lose, they're gonna wrap yeah. around you sometime in that fight. Yeah, for sure. I think honestly, if they get it, if they get it, if they get that fight to the ground in the first round. I th- there's a great chance they can finish it for sure. But it all depends on their opponent. You know, Patricio is one of the best guys in the world. AJ is a really good guy too. So if they, if they tactically fight the way that it's geared to them, which is like, you know, punch, move, punch, move, punch, move their feet. Then I think it could be a long night. And the longer the fight goes, obviously, less, you know, you get sweaty, you get slick. It's going to be harder to get submissions. But I think if it goes to the ground in the first round, I think both of them have a very good shot at, at ending the fight in first those guys they can't get arrogant either man like oh yeah i go to the ground mm-hmm. i'm good too yeah you can't get arrogant right? i think a lot of people <laughs> see and that's the thing too because i i was I, I you know you you know you don't know what you don't know right and uh yeah. my last fight with satoshi i was like well yeah he's a really good jiu-jitsu guy but like i've gone with really amazing black belt mm-hmm. you know what i mean like i've you know how to wrestle and punch and like you know it's 
MMA, I don't have to get to these guys, right? So I was a little bit arrogant in the fact of thinking like, oh, well, fine, I can go to the ground. I'm fine with this guy. I can just beat him up. And then, you know, you, you go to the ground and you get in entanglements with these guys and you're like, it's not the same. You know what I mean? Like, and uh, they're real, they're real specialists. You know what I mean? They're real specialists of the sports. Like, you know, Damon Maya esque, you know what I mean? Guys like that who are just really special. Like, not guys who are just like, oh, I've gone black belt here, you know, at my local gym and, you know, whatever, smash him. It's like, no, these guys are like black belts and black belts. You know what I mean? Like, they're freaking elite. So, you know, I think, I think, um, I think if they come into this fight, thinking that like oh I, you know Patricio is a black belt i think he's probably a black belt he's up there too so they come in that thinking like oh black it's the same it's the same then i think they're going to be in for a rude awakening man it's a, it's going to be a night of phenomenal fights man ryzen 40 and then you know uh, ryzen versus bellator but you you're going to be on ryzen 40 december 31st um in saitama super arena it's going to be a, a phenomenal night go into descriptions download the all-star app Thank you, Johnny, so much, man, for the time, man. Embrace your travels. That's what that's what you're doing, man. So it's always good to see you. Always good to catch up. Likewise, man. It's really good to talk to you too, John. I hope you're doing well and, and I appreciate your time.